Hello everyone, this is Professor Ng Chi Kun from Minimas. In this video, I'm going to give you a lecture on how we derive the design formula for flange beams. So flange beams meaning that it has got a white flange, okay, and then it has got a narrower web at the bottom of the beam, okay. So it can be a T section beam like this or a L section beam like this. So for these type of beams, we need to first determine what is the effective width of the flange, eh? B effective. So B effective is given by this uh, equation 3.25 here. So B effective is the total of B effective at each side of the beam plus the web of the beam, BW. And then it has to be smaller than the physical width of the T or L beams. Huh? So what does it mean by O of each term here? Let's look at the series of beams supporting a slab like this. And then we have a beam here that we want to design okay so for this beam okay the slab will be divided into two parts okay one part is for this side of the beam okay one part for this side of the beam and then the other part for that side of the beam so this is what we mean by the physical dimension b which is b1 plus b2 okay so this is what it means by the physical dimension and then the effective width for each side of the flange then we have to look at the distance between points of contra fracture or zero moment along the span of the beam and the other rotations are shown in these uh, figures in the next page. Huh? So let's say this beam here has some supports here, here and here, and then we view it from this side. Okay. Then we will be getting a view like this. Huh? Okay. Where we have B1 on the left hand side, B2 on the right hand side, and BW is the width of the fringe. Okay, and then B effective 1 and B effective 2 is the measurement that will be depending on the distance between points of contra fracture. So the points of contra fracture, okay, let's say you are designing for the section of this beam here. And then you have an end support here and the internal support there. Then the points of contrafracture definitely at this uh, pin end here, the moment is zero. Okay. And then we assume that the moment at L0 equals to 0 0.85 L1 is the zero moment point as well. So we're assuming that the moment diagram is like this. Huh? Okay, and then if we are designing a cross section of the beam here, then the value for the distance between the points of contra fracture L0 is taken as 0.7 L. Okay, so meaning that the bending moment diagram will look like this. Okay, and then if we are designing a cantilever part, okay then the value for the distance between the contra fracture point will be 0.15 L2 plus L3. Yeah? So we are assuming that the bending moment diagram looks like that. So we just calculate for P effective of each side of the beam using 0.2 BI plus 0.1 distance between points of contra fracture 
okay and then the total here cannot be more than 0 0.2 times the distance between points of contra fracture okay and then the B effective calculated for each side of the beam cannot be more than the physical dimension of the beam B1 or B2 eh? so after we have got the B effective calculated okay then the first step that we need to do in the design of uh, beams like this is to check the x over d ratio or we check k values huh? okay so k values is checked using the effective width of the flange huh? and then we get z and x from this equation and this equation okay so if 0.8 x is smaller than hf then we proceed to step two if 0.8 x is more than hf then we proceed to step three so now let us look at the design using step two first huh? okay so if we check 0.8x is smaller or equal to hf which is the flange thickness okay then what it means here is that the depth of the compression block that is 0.8x is within the flange right so meaning that compression is only acting in the compression zone like this okay so if we have a situation like this then whether you have concrete or not okay below the flange the behavior of the beam will still be the same okay the compression zone is still this much so this beam will behave as a rectangular beam okay with the width b effective okay so in this case we just design this beam as a rectangular beam with the width of the beam s equals to be effective okay so that's why you see that in step 2 here when 0.8x is smaller or equal to hf then the real code 2 rectangular stress blocks lies wholly within the flange thickness so the steel reinforcement as is equal to m over 0.87 fyk z in this equation and then the moment arm z is also using the same equation for rectangular beam so this type of beam design is very simple we just follow rectangular beam design but now the width we just take it as b effective of the flange eh? so now let us look at another situation where 0.8x is greater than the flange thickness hf so meaning that this rectangular stress block here the 0 0.8 times effective depth okay is greater than hf so in this situation the compression block of the beam looks like this okay meaning that the whole flange is in compression as well as some part of the web is also in compression so in this case we cannot assume that we have concrete beam like this okay if we assume that then it means that you assume that there is concrete here and concrete here but physically there is no concrete there so you cannot do that so in this case 
we need to proceed to step 3 for our design. So we need to proceed to step 3 for the design of a beam that has behavior like this where part of the web is also in compression. So the design formula that we are going to derive is for this type of beam okay, where part of the web is also in compression. So the design equation for 0.8x is greater than hf or t section behavior the rectangular stress block lies partly outside the flange where some part of the web is also in compression so the first step is to check the design ultimate moment using this equation okay so the moment should not be more than beta f fck b effective d square and then beta f fck b effective d square is the ultimate moment of resistance of the section for which the derivation is shown later in the lecture where beta f is given by this expression here in equation 3.27 so the derivation of beta f is as follows so first we compute the ultimate moment of resistance of the flange first all right so we divide the beam into the compression in the fringe like this and the compression zone in the fringe on the other side like that okay and then from the concrete compression we can also draw the stress distribution as we have seen before but now all these dimensions are known. We have HF, which is the flange thickness. So the depth of the compression zone is HF. And then the total compression is the stress multiplied by the shaded area here. Okay. Which is B effective minus BW times HF, which is the area of the shaded area here okay on both sides here okay so the stress multiplied by the area will give you the force which is the total compression and then here we have the steel that needs to balance the compression here so we call it sf okay the total steel area that needs to provide the tension force to balance the compression force in the fringe. Eh? So in this case, the total force in the steel is the design strength 0.7 FYK multiplied by ASF. And the moment arm is D minus 0.5 HF. So I mean that the moment of resistance for the flange uh, compression is the compression force multiplied by the moment arm okay then we are getting this expression here if we factorize fck b effective d square okay and then from steel tension we use the steel tension force multiplied by the moment arm then we get equation 3.28b next we compute the ultimate moment of resistance of the web which is shown in this figure here okay with x over d equals to 0.45 which is the maximum x over d that is allowed in the design okay so now the compression is in the web where the compression zone is the shaded area here okay and then in this case the depth of the compression zone is taken as 0.36 d so in this case if x is taken as a 0. 45 d then 
we will be getting the compression force here is 0 0.454 fck bw times 0 0.45 d times the moment arm of 0 0.82 d if you substitute x equals to 0 0.45 d here then d minus 0 0.4 x will be equals to 0 0.82 D. Okay, so we will get 0 0.167 FCK BW D square. Okay, so this is the K balance. Huh? We get this as K balance because we use X equals to 0 0.45 D in our calculation. So when you use X equals 0 0.45 D, we will be getting the maximum moment of resistance. Huh? So the maximum moment of resistance is given by the resistance from the flange plus the moment of resistance from the web. So you just add the two terms together and then you solve for FCK B effective D square. And then you factorize FCK B effective D square. Then the terms inside here will look like this which is equals to beta f. So we have already proved that beta f is equals to this term here. And in actual design, we want to check whether the moment due to load effects is smaller than this maximum moment of resistance or not. Okay, If this is true, then the x over d value will be less than 0. 4, 5. Okay, so therefore the moment of resistance is calculated using this expression here where x is not equal to 0 0.45d. Yeah? Okay, so x should be smaller than 0 0.45d in this case. Right, so then we derive the equation and then we take this term as k w as we take k in rectangular beam for the singly reinforced section. Eh? Okay, and then for steel tension is 0 0.87 fyk multiplied by the asw. So now we only consider the compression in the web eh? so the steel tension is also area of steel to resist the compression in the web and then z is the moment arm given by equation 3.31 here which look the same as the z value for rectangular beam design for a singly reinforced beam eh? except that this term here we call it KW. Eh? Okay. And then the total moment of resistance is from the flange moment of resistance plus the web moment of resistance, which is KW, FCK, B, W, D squared. So KW is M minus moment of resistance of the flange over FCK, B, W, D squared. So we calculate KW from equation 3.32 here and then the total steel area of reinforcement is the total steel from the flange plus the total steel needed to resist the compression in the web. Okay, So from both equations then we get equation 3.33 here. Okay. So for further simplification, okay, so normally we design the whole section assuming that x is equals to 0 0.45d. Yeah? Okay, so we assume x equals to 0 0.45d, then k equals to k balance. Kw is equals to k balance, which is 0 0.167. 
So in this case, the design equation for the steel is given in equation 3.34. Okay, and then in a very unlikely event of uh, the moment due to load effects is greater than the ultimate moment of resistance of the beam without any compression reinforcement. So remember that this is just a singly reinforced section. Eh? Okay. If the moment is greater than the maximum moment of resistance for a single reinforced section, then we will need compression reinforcement. Okay, where the excessive moment has to be carried by the compression reinforcement. So the compression reinforcement multiplied by the moment arm okay, has to resist the balance moment of the load effect minus the moment of resistance of a singly reinforced section. So the required steel area as prime of the compression steel is obtained previously. Yeah? So the tension steel area as is then determined from equilibrium of forces where the total tension is equal to the French compression plus weight compression plus steel compression. So the design equation is given in equation 3.36. From equation 3.36, we can obtain the total area of tension reinforcement. So that's all for the lecture in this video. Thank you very much for listening.